Hello, my name is Don Hopkins. I'm about to show you a panelized construction that I've used in the Mojave Desert, very hot temperate conditions. This can be constructed out of panels just set down in simple footings right here with rebar coming up. Here you can see where it's been squared with string line. And this footing's been poured as a rough slab down in there. A very small structure that's actually going to be used as a pump house for a water pump house out in the desert. These panels are fairly easy and light to use. They can be trimmed and fitted with simple tools and assembled rather quickly. Within here, this is just the footing. There will be another 2x4 set on top of this 2x6 that's been put down in here to where we can set the panels in there and then the foam within the bottom of the panels can be removed and that will be wet within the metal structure of the panel so it sits inside locked in the concrete very strong high wind resistance these panels you can realize the temperature differential in degrees Fahrenheit of up to 25, 25 degrees from the outside to the inside each one of these structures can be done at low cost they're very well suited for wet conditions and very high heat or even extreme cold conditions. This particular area in which I'm building is called Mojave Valley, Arizona. It's known around this area and even in North America as one of the hottest spots. So it became a perfect place to set up a prototype for Southeast Asia here. Here you have the first tier set up. This is the, where the doorway will be, where you can see where the foam is already removed. It can get quite windy out here, so these braces will be employed, but they, they will be used regardless, no matter where you construct it. It just sets it up till the concrete on the bottom dries. In the middle, you can see the footing that I've put in for a center wall, and that's just to divide the two rooms apart. This room right here is basically just storage. It can use, be used for a number of things. If it was to be a larger structure, it could conceivably be a bedroom. You'll notice the, the water there, the water pipe that has the coffee can you'll see here. Here's a doorway that's been put in already. I'm just gonna walk over here and show you that parts of the panels that have been trimmed can be put right here to, to my left where the door's at. Right here, you just trim the panels and you can slide them right in. That's why this panel to the right is kicked out. So you just leave it loose and you can slide the panels right into the doorway. Then some of the cutoffs can be just put right here, like a foot and a half. Right there is where you tie it all together with simple rebar tie wire. Coming around, you can see where the, the bottom panel can be split and the top panel be put in. And then they could be put together with a Stanley hog ring pneumatic air pliers. They uh, work fairly efficient, but there's also handheld models that you can use as well. that are commonly referred to as hog ring pliers. This right here, I constructed this because there's some super high winds in this particular Mojave Valley that occur during this time of year in the late spring. And that wall was constructed to push against the wind, which commonly comes from the north. This will just take a walk around and look at the whole periphery of the structure from the outside. Oh, you're in the shadows now. Two by fours will be employed wherever needed to keep the walls plumb and just tie them together with some simple rebar tie wire. Holding those kickers up is just a stake down in the ground. The two bys are screwed into that. Pretty simple. So a friend of mine that came in and helped out with it. On this particular date, it reached 120 degrees on the outside, this was just before that occurred, it was around 3 p.m., quite hot. I had this tarp above us to keep the actual external stucco from cracking. So you can see it's a basic square structure with just a door, a window, and on the sides is each uh, glass block window to allow airflow to pass through. Right here we're using the hawk and trowel method right there. For a small structure, it has possible, but the shock creep method with anything 
larger than this is highly recommended. That's a particular stucco that I used that happens to be fiberglass impregnated. Here you can see the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is pushing 108 degrees. So look at that thermometer that is in the shade for accurate reading. And you look on the inside of the structure, which is not even yet complete. But uh, I just wanted to have a look and see what kind of readings we could take on this particular day. And on the inside, we have 90, just about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So at that juncture, you're looking at upwards of 18 degrees of a temperature differential just between the outside and in. Right, and once again, that's where the standpipe is for the water, where the pump will actually be in our pump house here. These panels are inherently strong. I mean, once the stucco is applied to them, they can, they're much stronger than your average conventional construction wall. Just due to the way that, that the stucco material does dry to it here as well. This is where we're um, about three quarter of the way down with the outside exterior. Let's have another look around. As you can see, it's quite a simple structure. It's a flat roof parapet design with a sloped roof on top and then drainage scuppers on the back that go into one single hole. Which the, the water, the drainage water, can actually be reclaimed, which is something that we'll experiment with later. But it's, it's all rather simple operation. It's been done before with other structures. On the back side, the hole for the scupper is not yet been constructed. Even with this bit video being shot right here, it's upwards of uh, pushing 120 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. This was in uh, July of 2008. That's the scratch coat, the first coat that's been applied. Last coat, I used a color coat with a tan, a darker reddish tan, simple saccharine colorant, which you'll see right about here. It's not quite yet dry at that juncture, and that's what it looks like from the front. And here's Rod Hadrian's video. 